Hello. Good morning. <laughs> and we're live. Welcome to Morning Breath. Here we are. And it's Wednesday, June 22nd, 2022. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, yesterday was the summer solstice. Beautiful day. We had a light club last night that was extremely powerful. I feel like I'm still kind of recovering uh, from uh, all the energy that uh, we came in contact with last night. Very, very powerful. Very, very powerful. Probably the most powerful uh, light club to date. They keep getting stronger and stronger. We had a nice big group. Mm, it was beautiful. Let's keep pushing that out there. One million Buddhas. Good morning, y'all. Uh, speaking of which, uh, one million Buddhas was one of our participants. Good morning. Tom Thompson's here. Good morning. He, Anthony Smigelski. <laughs> I'm not sure what that was supposed to say, but I got gotcha. you. Good morning, Anthony. Good morning, Brianna. Good morning. Ricky Audra. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Ricky. Sister Ricky's here. Perfect. You're just right for, uh, for, uh, there's going to be a few of us here, including Brianna and Tom and, uh, 1 million Buddhas, uh, that will, uh, be recovering this morning, uh, bringing forward some new informational vibration. Uh, Amanda Whitehart, hello, good evening and winter solstice for us yesterday. Yeah, right. Uh, so that's, um, in the Southern hemisphere. In the Southern Hemisphere, uh, you know, I'm a Paco, so this is a Peruvian tradition. Uh, Pacha, that'll be actually the 24th is when they celebrate it. Uh, not the 21st like we do, the 24th. And the biggest holiday uh, in Peru is Pacha Raimi, which is um, a uh, festival so Raimi means sun or, or inti Raimi inti Raimi inti is sun and Raimi is festival uh because they're very much they look at uh, the sun as one of the most powerful energies uh available because it is it's got all of the information all the information of our dna every cell of our body takes information it bounces through it comes off the sun the sun is a powerful informational vehicle and in some traditions is looked at as uh the sun god like not the god because they don't like in those traditions it's not like um christian traditions where there's like one deity that uh, it's it's basically all is living and beautiful. All is God. So it's beautiful, but beautiful, yeah. So that's a, like I was saying down there. Uh, that's it's their winter solstice, is what it is. It's also like the Inca New Year. Uh, so it's pretty cool. Good morning, Amanda. And then Grand Rising Soul Brother. Good morning, Schizo Crypto. Morning on YouTube, and there's Tom on YouTube. Good, beautiful. We got ourselves a nice little group this morning. If you're just checking in with us, please comment. Let us know how you're doing this morning. Let us know where you're watching from. We always like to know because then we can connect energetically here as we begin to breathe. Uh, it's very powerful when we're able to connect with each other uh, energetically and uh, strengthen the web of energy uh, around the world. In my tradition, we call these sea key lines. Uh, which in more general terms would be like ley lines of energy. Uh, I don't see it as that square per se. It's more like a nervous system or a root system uh, or a branch system. It all means the same thing. Like when you look at tree branches, how they come out and they are smaller and they diffuse out small, smaller and smaller until you don't see them anymore. Well, trees are funny like that. As a matter of fact, they actually, if you have the, uh, spiritual or energetic vision you can see that they don't end there just like how we don't end uh people who are clairsentient we can see that we don't end at our skin uh, our vibrational energy or it's like the same thing our nervous system has like branches that we're aware of we've been taught to perceive ends at our skin but just like a tree it continues off 
a tree continues off into space and connects with everything else. It connects with everything else in the quantum field of energy. Same thing with the root system. If you're capable of feeling and seeing root systems, that's why I have people work with trees so much and they're so powerful is when you make contact with the tree, you hug it or you put your hands on it. Um, you're connected now to the highest levels of the Hanukkah which would be the upper world or higher vibrational realities, as well as the Uhu Pacha, uh, the lower world or lower vibrational realities. So we get to really be that central circuit strong in that position when we work with trees. Or the Mauki Kuna, as they're referred to in the Pakakuna tradition, which I like that name. I think it's cute and purdy. Cute and purdy. Uh, let's see. Buddha says, I've been reading the Stephen King series, The Dark Tower, and many of the themes seem to be parallels to this shaman experience I'm learning. It's interesting. Oh, well, that sounds interesting. I mean, you know, art imitates life or something like that. I mean, that's where these ideas for books and movies and everything's come from is usually from ancient traditions. Ancient stories. Uh, it's something that I learned. Let me see something. I need to charge my phone. It didn't charge. Ooh, I'm messing up the camera and everything. But last night, I was just ready for bed. Uh, by the time I got, I was really wound up for a little bit after the uh, after uh, the session. I just had to jump in there. Hey, let's go back here. Hey, hey, I can't get it right now. There it is. Hey, there it is. But that sounds super interesting. Word, I feel it. Yay. Uh, hey, lovelies. The lovelies are here. But that was a beautiful light club. Probably the strongest one ever, uh, especially on the summer solstice. So we did a lot of work. We connected with the sun itself, <coughs> uh, you know, bringing in the nourishment, helping the sun helps us bring forward the proper nourishment um, to feed our burgeoning souls. So it's really far out. Before we get started, the first thing you want to do is clear your nose. Uh, if you're anything like me, uh, when you wake up in the morning, when I wake up in the morning, I usually have a, a little bit of sinus blockage in the morning. Uh, I am a recovered uh, COPD uh sufferer, I guess. I don't know what you call it. I don't know. I used to have lung disease really bad and now it's very minor. And what happens is, is I have a little bit of sinus blockage in the morning, but that's not bad at all. Oh, Queen Anne. Good morning, Queen Anne. Tom Thompson. Yes, it was, la it was last night. Lots of energy. I saw and felt Ra again. Yeah, Ra's always here. <laughs> Pardon me. <laughs> and also one of the primary energies I work with, uh, when I call in sacred space, uh, you'll hear me, you won't know me usually what I'm saying because it's Quechua, but uh, when I get to towards the end of opening sacred space, uh, I call in Koichi Kunda, and Koichi is, uh, those are uh, rainbow beings, beings of rainbow light. And then usually after that, you call in your teachers and then you call in your Yana Pakuna, which is your um, spirit family. So that would be like your family of spirits or guides that you work with. And usually after I do that and get that all in, I'll have the practitioners that are working with me call in, open their sacred space, calling in their divinities, the things that they perceive as divine. Because for everyone, that's different. There, Nobody's wrong. Nobody's wrong about how they perceive divinity. That's the thing. That's religion. That's religion tries to tell you what divinity is, tries to tell you what God is, which is unexplainable. It's not something that's uh, explainable in any sort of literary way. It's feeling. You feel it. It's a vibrational sensation. Uh, language is a huge limit in trying to describe divinity uh, for most people. That's why I just put it, whatever's divine to you, call that into your space. There's nothing wrong. There's no wrong answer, whatever it is. If it's loving light in some way to you, that's all that matters. 
And we're going to do that this morning. We're going to open up some space. I'm going to uh, open up sacred space here, just more of a simple way. Also, I can feel there's a little bit of hucha living in my garage. So I'm going to smudge that as we open up breathing. I have some Palo Santo ready. Uh, I like to take it. I take uh, chunks of Palo Santo. Maybe I can find one. I take chunks of Palo Santo like this, like this. And see, there's like some lines on it because I like to use this wonderful steak knife. <laughs> this wonderful steak knife. And then what I do is I shave Palo Santo off. You can also get Palo Santo uh, resin. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to continue to use Palo Santo. I'm going to use what I have uh, until it's gone because I've made some recent discoveries. I have a friend that uh, actually did some time uh, on a retreat living in Peru, and she kind of informed me that uh, Palo Santo is kind of connected in ways to like slave labor. Uh, so that's kind of disturbing. I don't know if I'll keep using it in that capacity. We'll see. Uh, I have to do some more research on that as well. Good morning from Texas. Good morning, Lynn Ramsey. We're so glad you're here, sister. That was a powerful light club. Thank you, Brianna. It sure was. And thanks to you, even more powerful. All of us that were there. Brianna is a very powerful uh, channel. Uh, I was able to connect to her and Mary. Mary definitely, bang, leveled up. Leveled up in her channeling ability. Uh, we're all changing. We're all growing, all of us, everybody, because the people in there, there are some people that were new, but a lot of the people I work with already, and I can feel everyone, everyone's more vibration, more beautiful vibration. The all-knowing, I know that, I know no thing. I am no thing. I love telling people that I am nothing. And they're like, what is that? Isn't that a bad thing to say? No, it's an agreement that I am no, th I am no thing. I am no body. I am no body. And I'm everybody. Isn't that weird? <laughs> and beautiful. <laughs> Queen Anne. Yes, it was. I have a quit story and sorry, had to leave at seven. Had another summer solstice event that I thought was at eight with one of my mentors that's not on Facebook. That's okay, Ann. Everybody's allowed to come and go as they please. Uh, uh, and travel to beach lake area and was in her own little world. Oh, Palo Santo. I'm not sure what we're talking about there either. But that is wonderful. We had one of our friends, Jeanette. She couldn't get on. She was blocked out for some reason from getting uh, audio. Uh, I don't know if she restarted or tried to get on, but Jeanette, if you watch this, we'll figure out what to do or we'll work together to make sure you get a connection. Uh, sometimes, you know, it's difficult for some people to get a connection the first try. All right. Who's ready to do some breathing? I am. I'm ready to do some breathing. I have my candle lit. I'm ready. Well, let's do some shaking. Let's get shaking. Let's wake up that nervous system, okay? Let us begin. Stick out your hands. Shake your hands. Shake your hands. Shake your hands. Move that. Let that go up your arms, up your arms, and into your body. And then start shaking your whole body. Use your torso. Use your spine, your waist, your hips, your legs. And then let your face go loose. Just let your face loose. And go. Close your eyes and shake. Three, two, one. Shake it out. Ah, mm -hmm. Good. Let's stretch our face now. This is really fun. Looks ridiculous. Looks silly, but it feels great. Stretch your face. Ah, Stick your tongue out. Stretch your jaw. Open your jaw as far as it'll go. Open your eyes as big as they'll go. Stretch your face here. Okay. Ah, and then to take your chin, push it forward, and pull it towards the sky. Mm. To the side. Mm. Again. Mm. And then we're going to just do some neck rotations, do some half rotations like this. Oh. Oh. 
Uh, let's open up our chest cavity. Interlace your fingers. Push them out in front of you. Then reach overhead. Make your body as long as possible. Taking a deep breath. Long, long, long. And as you exhale, even longer. Then taking another breath. And as you exhale, sweep your aura. Very good. Mm, that feels really good. Let's take a couple cleansing breaths. Deep cleansing breath. Alone is here. Grand rising. Grand rising to you, sister. It's not grand rising breath, though. It's morning breath. Grand rising. Welcome to morning breath. Somebody had a great question not too long ago and asking, why is it grand rising? Why are we talking grand rising? Uh, some people are irritated by it, I guess. I don't know why. Mm, don't ask me. Uh, I, I'm guessing that it's probably just because it's out of program, out of tradition. We're programmed to say good morning, you know. Uh, but for some people, it goes both ways. For some people are irritated by good morning, by that language, because they're saying that morning means to mourn. That's what they're saying. So that's how this grand rising uh, term came about. I think you should say whatever you want. Whatever you want. I like grand rising. Mm, good. I like good morning because mm, it's it's not about the words, uh, language. We were talking about this last night, actually, in Light Club, talking about how limiting language is because every word has a different meaning. So, like, uh, we can sit here and we can just pick a word. Okay, I'll, I'll pick a word. Light switch. So what you do is you take the word. You don't automatically, I mean, you know what a light switch looks like, but what does it feel like to you? what comes to mind, right? Because there's a memory and a trigger attached to words. That's the emotional. That's the thing we don't pay attention to. We're always trying to be literal. But the thing is, is we all have feelings that we're not paying attention to. So when I think of light switch, uh, the first thing that comes to mind, uh, I have a memory of trying to shut the light switch off and jump in bed at the same time when I was little. See? So for me, that's what that associates and that kind of means. It is going to mean something totally different for you. So that's why language is a very big limit because it doesn't account. It's just literal. It doesn't account for the energetics around it. Somebody else may see light switch. Maybe there's a trauma connected to the light switch. Maybe there's a something beautiful connected to the light switch for them. Everybody's a little bit different. So everybody has their own right to say whatever they want. And the thing is, is we live in a world where we say that we live in the, the United, like, well, I live in the United States where you're supposed to have free speech, but you don't. You cannot just say whatever you want. So it's not exactly true, but you can feel however you want. And no one can stop you from that. You can choose how you feel in any moment, and that can never be stopped by anyone because that's a part of you that's uh, limitless. The rest is just the story. Yeah. So thank you, Alona. I don't know why that all came out, but uh, I think it's beautiful. Flicking a light switch fast to make a disco for me and my brother. Cool. Pew. Ring my bell. Bell. See? What does bell mean to you? The first thing that comes to my mind is I see a beautiful white southern church. I don't know why. It's the first thing that come pops into my mind when I think of bell. And then uh, another thought is Liberty Bell. A big bell would crack in it. Mm. Everybody's different. That's the cool thing about language. And that's the cool thing about being here for all of us. When we all learn to be loving of each other and be acceptant of our each unique uh, observation uh, of this place. Because we are all one thing, okay? We're just unique representations of the one thing. But we're not separate. That's the thing. That's the mind trouble. That's the biggest trouble the mind has, the ego has, is letting go of uh, this false uh, feeling of a singular identity. Uh, the thing is, is we are a sing. You're not a singular identity. All is a singular identity. Having each of us being I, at a deeper level, each one of us is a neuron. That we're part of a neural network, uh, all one parts of a living brain. And we get to have this experience of a human life or, or this organic life. We just consider this all to be normal because we've been programmed to like, okay, well, I'm a man and that looks normal. That's how your mind makes it. I'm, I'm waves of light and information. And so are you, all of this is the instrument makes it 
reality because you don't actually um, observe reality. You're observing all the vibrational information coming into your nervous system through all these, you know, particularly your five main senses, but there's so many more. I group those all, all of the other senses into clairsentience because that's beyond or outside the standard five condition sense, uh, senses. That doesn't make them different or anything else. They're just senses that we have not been trained to use. We've been programmed to only use the five. And within those five keeps us trapped in the physicality. Uh, that's kind of what that's all about. But if we get out here and start to have um, experience with our deeper levels of self, our, our higher levels of uh, sentience itself, that kind of changes how we uh, interact with this reality in which we are the creators of. Uh, hello from this from this side. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. All right, well, let's do some breathing. Let's take it. Let's do some cleansing breaths. Uh, I feel like I need to cleanse and move. I'm also going to Palo Santo as that happens. Uh, so let's just do that first. We're going to open up with some cleansing breaths, taking in a big breath through the nose. And then out with a soft sigh. Ah, relax your neck and shoulders. Ah, belly, chest, begin. Cleansing breath. Ah, relax your neck and shoulders. Again. Very good again. Two more. Again. Again. One more. And as you breathe out, sigh out. Just relax. Let your breathing go slow. We're going to move into the next breath exercise. Already I'm feeling way better, way more relaxed. My sympathetic, my parasympathetic nervous system is being engaged. My rest and digest mode feels good. And look, I have my favorite shirt on. Get high on your own supply. I can get these shirts made if anybody wants one. I dig it. I think it's fun. You know, people usually, they'll see me walking around, this bald guy with my uh, beard and my shirt. And the first thing I think they see is, get high. And they're like, what's going on? And they're like, oh, wait, there's some lungs there. Oh, on your own supply. And they're probably like, what's that mean? But that's good. The kids are wondering. <laughs> I love it. Uh, Alona says, are you able to do a heart healing session for me today? Do you mean like a mini healing here on the live? I can help you here on the live. I would love to, but a session. Yeah. You could book a session anytime and we can go into the depth of your healing, but I can do like a minor surface healing here. I love those shirts. I'm definitely getting one. Cool. We have a lady that makes them. That's an awesome shirt. How do I get one? I believe they're available on our website, I think. I'll have to check with Mary because uh, we order and we have a lady that makes some. These are actually handmade vinyl print. A woman makes these T-shirts for us. A beautiful woman named Margarita. Margarita. 2X or 3X? Yeah, we have them. I had a 3X made for my cousin Jim. He's a big, big man. He's a lot bigger than you, Tom. So I think he might have been 4X. I don't know. He's about three. He's about the same height as me. I'm about 6'1". Uh, he's about 6'1", but he, I'm about 205. He's about 330. He's a big, big guy. Big, big guy. Big, big guy called Jimmy. Big Jimmy. <laughs> Okay, let's get back into breathing here. This one we're going to do, we're going to do some 369 breathing. I really want to clear it out today. Uh, last night was really fun. We were on Light Club. We got deep into uh, um, uh, what do I call that kind of breathing? I'm drawing a blank at the moment. Uh, hybrid breathing. So uh, that's beautiful. I'm going to make a video. Hybrid breathing, super powerful for connecting to the pineal gland. Uh, so I'm going to do a video about that. Let me put this here hybrid i have been working on some videos it just takes time to edit them and all that stuff 
we're working on it. Yeah. I believe, I can't tell you for sure they're still available on the website. I think they are. I have to make sure. I, I have to check it out. But you can totally check it out uh, and to tell me what you find when you find it. All right, we're going to do 369. We're going to start with three. And then we're going to move into six. And then finally into nine. That actually feels fun. Let's do that. Let's do it in succession. Let's do three, six, nine, three, six, nine, three. Six, nine, wow, wow, three, six, nine. Three, six, nine. All right, now we're going to do just threes, a bunch of threes. Belly, chest, head. Six. <sighs> Tailbone the scalp. <sighs> Nine breaths now. Continue breathing, all that tingling in your face, your hands, your head. Keep filling it up, bringing more information, more vibration into the area. Last one. Release. All your air out. Deep breath in. Hold, squeeze your perineum, your tailbone, move up into your tummy, into your solar plexus, into your chest, into your throat and collarbones, tongue press against the roof of the mouth, connect to your third eye. And release. We're going to now do nine backwards down to three. Hmm. Wow, so beautiful already. Before we get in there, let's open sacred space. We're going to do a healing for Alona, and we can bring some healings into ourselves as well. Energy, the energy of healing is available to us all. You don't have to be a shaman or a witch or anything except for you. That's all you have to be, and be open and ready to receive. This energy is you. It doesn't belong. The shaman doesn't own it. The guru doesn't own it. No one owns it. It is us. It is you. And we can connect to this living energy, this living uh, grid of energy, uh, which surrounds us. It matches basically our nervous system. Uh, think of you can't see or sense the energy. See it as the living energy that surrounds you. It's a nervous system that permeates all things a root system of energy, of lines. It's almost like uh, 
waves of lightning that move energy uh, through time space. We can connect to that. That's the quantum field of energy or the Akasha. This is also divine intelligence, the Akashic records. Uh, everything is recorded in the field. Nothing is lost or gone or, um, you know, it's just like even in biblical terms, God is the all-knowing. Right. It's just not a he. It's, I mean, it can be a he. If that's how you want to perceive it, you're allowed. I'm not going to tell you that's wrong. You can feel any way you want to. I'm just going to give you some deeper meanings. We go beyond the deity. The deity is um, a psychological uh, creation, a manifestation that comes through this system that we use. On a much deeper level, God is the one living energy. It's the energy that creates all things. There's no separation. It's everything. Again, it's the human mind that creates separation. It tries to make dark and light. That's why in our tradition, it's heavy and light. It's just aspects of the same thing is what it is. Not polarized. Not you're evil and I'm holy. That's not how it works. Yeah, there's people that are doing things that we were considered to be uh, bad. Or uh, what's another word that would be better? Because bad, again, is polarization of a lower vibrational quality. It may be undesirable to those who have vibrated at a higher vibrational quality. But what we have to understand is, is we're not separate. We are those. We are also, we're the greatest things about this reality we're also the worst things about this reality we are it so as long as we don't stay polarized we become possible it's capable for us to connect to that energy and raise its vibration so if you want to help the stuff that's going on in the world that you don't like that you think is bad and you see is terrible complaining or worrying about it or blaming someone you know because we live out in the world now and uh here in the united states it's always f f joe biden He's just a guy that works for uh, the story of a government. It's this is all a story in this reality. He's, you know, we're looking. The ego looks for blame. How you know it's causing separation. It uses separation as a tool to defend itself. So if I blame you, that can change something. Just like we blame other people. Shame on you. You should blame, blame, blame. You can blame someone all you want. It doesn't change how you feel inside. You can sit there. You can blame them. You can make them feel shameful for the decisions they've made or whatever. But that never changes how you feel inside. So the blame game never works. It never, ever works. I Usually I'll tell people, they'll, I'll work with some people sometimes. They're really stuck in a mindset of blame. They're blaming, blaming, blaming. And then sometimes I'll let them go. I'll let them vent per se let that all go and when they're done i'll be like okay and i'll be like well i'll just take all the blame it's all my fault and they're kind of look at me funny i'm like see see how that changes i could just take you know we're always trying to assign blame well it's not my fault it's your fault my fault like everybody's trying to assign blame what happens if we all just stand up and say okay it's all my fault just take it it's all my fault now what now what do we do now we're in a space of creatorship now we're no longer wasting time pointing fingers with our egos. Fine. It's all my fault. Fine. That doesn't change anything. What do we do to change now? What can we do to improve? Funny how that works. It's funny how we've been conditioned and traumatized. We're all conditioned and traumatized. I find myself sometimes where I'm in a mode of forgot that I'm the one, that you're the one. I forget. And I'll blame. Mm. And I'll be like, hold on. That doesn't change anything. <laughs> and then I move into the mode of creatorship and I take full accountability for all things because I am all things and I become radically acceptant. Okay. Thank you for accepting that wisdom transmission. I haven't opened my eyes in about three minutes and I forgot that they weren't open into the physical realm. Um, uh, I think we were calling in sacred space. I'm not going to go into the whole thing, call in Inca style. We're just going to call it in simple. Uh, we call upon all beings of all three levels of all worlds. We call upon all beings of light, energies, and frequencies willing to come into the space to help us facilitate change, healing, upgrade, uploads, downloads, however one perceives connection to the one living energy. It's a little bit different for all of us, and it's okay. It should be different for all of us.
But one thing that's always the case is we have the ability, all of us have the ability to connect to the living energy in which we are made. So connect, ask it to come to you. Any guides or angels. I have several angels that are stepping into the space. Good morning. Hello. Anaiki. Mm -hmm. mm. mm -hmm. Nature guides and beings, welcome. And ancestors, we call forward our ancestors. Ask your ancestors to come forward, that ancestral energy. That's part of your root system. Your ancestors are you. Give them love. Bring them forward. We bring you forward. Thank you. And now that your sacred space is open, we're going to begin to breathe, starting from the back down, from nine down to three. <clears throat> okay. So we're going to take nine breaths. <sighs> Ah, and continue connecting now to your vertical column. If you don't yet know how to connect to your vertical column, that's a video you're going to want to watch on our YouTube. And if you're not yet connected to our YouTube, connect to our YouTube. If you can watch from YouTube, we have a video called Connecting to Your Vertical Column of Energy. And this will help you learn how to connect to your vertical column, your chakras, your... There's so many names. It's a vertical column of energy that is your nervous system, your nerve centers. You have this primary, and then you have uh, many, many minor systems uh, that are connected to your nerve centers of your body. These could be called chakras, uh, nadis in uh, those traditions. In our tradition, we call these main centers nawis, is what we call them. It's kind of like nadi, but it's nawi. <laughs> so you're connecting to your vertical column. Continue breathing nine. Expand that belly. Just that. Beautiful. Moving to six. Again, moving, keep breathing, moving from the tailbone to the scalp. And as you exhale, drawing energy down through your scalp into your body, down into your tailbone, of bringing light into your tailbone as you exhale. And as you inhale, doing your inhale, filling up all the way from the tailbone to your scalp. <sighs> down, up. <sighs> Feel that movement. Three more. Two. One. Three breaths now. Be strong with it. Aggressive. Speed it up. Deep breath in and hold. Fill up belly, chest, head. Squeeze into your head. Try to make your face red. And release. Allow your breathing to just become slow, full but deep. You can open up your palms, your hands, saying with your heart, with your mind, with your body, with your soul, I'm open and ready to receive. Picturing yourself opening like a flower, like a blooming flower. And as you bloom, taking in the information through your petals. Mm, flowering. Mm, beautiful. A hummingbird, the royal hummingbird. Siwarkinti has entered our space. Mm, 
allow yourself to interact with this hummingbird. See what it looks like to you, its color, its shape, its size. For everyone, it's a little different, the royal hummingbird. Mm. The hummingbird is will and determination. Hummingbird has its tiny little wings, yet it migrates so far. It's the little engine that could. Thank you, Siwar Kinti. Thank you, Royal Hummingbird. Deep, slow breath in. And release. Ah, deep, slow breath in. And release. Ah, one more deep, slow breath in and hold. Hold. Sigh out. Ah, good. Come back to center. Come back. Mm, feel the qualities of your body, the vibration of your energy field, of your nervous system. Mm. Notice how different it are. See what's changed. Notice what's changed. Mm, beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. All right, well, I'm way off where I'm going here. <laughs> Just take your time. Allow yourself to relax. Hybrid and fire breathing last night. Yeah, that's the medicine that came through. I was very profound and powerful. I was proud I could do the hybrid breathing. Good. That means that your uh, nervous system is expanding. You can do anything. You are everything. You can do it. Of course you can. Just you have to remember how. We have to remember how to use that uh, diaphragm and everything in a certain way. The hardest part is using that diaphragm, is using that. <sighs> Who wants to do a little? Uh, we'll just do one quick round of uh, hybrid breathing. It's calling to me. So you can do it a bunch of different ways. I like to split it up into two pieces. The first, like a sniff, and then an inhale through the mouth, and then a release. So first you try that sniff, inhale through the mouth, release. So the sniff fills up the belly. You let the sniff connect to your stomach, to your lower diaphragm. So what you do is you, as you breathe in through your nose, just your belly. Your chest shouldn't even rise yet just your belly. That's the thing. If your chest is rising, that means you're off balance and you have to go back into your awareness. And for some of us, this takes a little bit of time and training to connect just to the diaphragm. The nose is directly connected to the diaphragm. The mouth is more connected to the upper parts of the breath coming up into the chest. So you can't actually breathe. Your lungs take up the space here. You can't actually breathe into your from your tailbone up to your head. You can't actually fill up air that way, but you can fill up light that way because the movement, you're, you're surrounded by light and using the breath, the breath is light. It's also light. Air is light. Everything is made of light. So when you're breathing and you use your intention to take that first sniff and fill up your belly. So I try to fill up from my tailbone to about my rib cage. <sighs> That happens on the inhale with the nose, and then the mouth can fill up the other two-thirds of the lung up into the chest, and then you rise into your chest and throat up into your head, and you release. So you're actually, you're breathing down tailbone up to the midsection, and then from the mid all the way up to your scalp. Tailbone. Scalp. And then you start to smooth it out. You don't put any gaps in between your inhales. And then you can become more aggressive. I'm already I'm vibrating all out here into my energy field. And then you can really make it smooth. I like to really get that gasp on the mouth inhale. And the more better you get at this, the more you can put into it.
deep breath in. A little more. Hold, squeeze into your tummy. Up into your chest, tap, tap, tap. Squeeze and release. Uh, Wow, that's really powerful. So I just connected to the spirit of an ancient Egyptian woman, and she's showing me I think they're grape leaves. She's making some sort of grape leaves. It's food. She's showing me food. What else? Sustenance. Sust soul sustenance. So these grape leaves, these energetic grape leaves. Oh, she's making them for all of us. So if everybody, what you can do is use your, uh, your uh, energetic sensitivity. Uh, I want you to picture uh, basically an energetic grape leaf. Uh, I don't know if you ever had those before. Uh, they probably have another name in ancient Egyptian. Uh, she's telling me that these are sustenance for our body, healing for our body. Thank you, Isis. Okay, the, this is a form of Isis. I've never met this uh, uh, intelligence before. Uh, Mary has worked with Isis or the energetics of Isis. Mm -hmm. So we're being given these grape leaves. You can either ingest it, eat it, or you could just let it disintegrate into your hands. Uh, it's a little energetic packet. It's uh, being lovingly given to us. So I accept. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm kind of reading the information within this packet, this a uh, small energetic token that's been given to us. It looks like a grape leaf. Uh, they're cellular downloads, capabilities for self-healing. We accept. I accept. If you're willing to accept, you can take this. You can digest it, taking it in however you wish. I'm going to feed mine through my chest with an inhale. Hold. And release. <sighs> Nike Kuyaiki, thank you, thank you, thank you. That was really powerful. Let's take in a deep breath. Hold and release. Deep breath. Hold and release. Deep breath. Hold. Hold and release. Beautiful. So we did some hybrid breathing and received a spiritual gift. How cool is that? Mm. I've never had that happen before. I'm kind of dumbfounded. Mm -hmm. But that's how it always is. I always find myself. I've never been here before. Today's a new day, which isn't actually true. It's a new vibrational reality. We're in a different channel. All of us last night that were in that uh, light club, we definitely cruised. I haven't been really like out in the world yet. So I'm curious to see what the differences are. After ever, every time I undergo some sort of large quantum shift like that, there's a lot of Mandela effects. Uh, if you don't know what the Mandela effect is, you can look that up. It's, it's an easy way to describe is when there's a vibrational change in reality and you go outside and you observe all of these minor changes like the store, just like a building might have just popped up somewhere on a route that you normally go or drive or things are different. What happens is, is this is always happening. It's just we kind of been trained to just chalk it up as not paying. We're not actually paying attention to it. We just, oh, well, it must have always been that way. But as we become more um, connected on a higher scale to our energy, these things become very aware. Like uh, there's times we're just wow. Remember, I remember one time we had a really, really big, strong uh, quantum shift about a year and a half ago. And we were just walking through a park and then you just would see these random objects. It was almost like a video game. Like there was just a purse sitting there like this. I mean, it was like this nice neighborhood where we took uh, Raysa to play and it was 
our daughter, Raisa, because she's a few years younger then. And we were uh, hanging out at like this park, this park area in this nearby community. It's a really nice community. But it was just odd that there was just a purse sitting there, like someone just left it there. I decided not to touch it because I don't know what it is. And then like you're just walking along and randomly there was like a hammer, like a framing hammer just sitting on the ground and some other stuff. Like it was just really odd. And that was like the first time that spirit was giving me, showing me, listen, you have to pay attention to these quantum shifts. And since then, that's pretty much where my deep sensitivity to quantum shifting really started to begin. So I'm really aware of them all the time. Uh, you'll become more aware too, as it continues, every decision you make, every decision is a quantum shift. So what you'll get good at doing is, is seeing your thoughts, the conditioning and everything within your thoughts. And then you're able to connect into the field and see potential outcomes because there's all potentials out here and they're based on your reaction. Uh, somebody asked recently, they were talking about, uh, I was pretty much to trying to explain to them all things happen the way they're meant to. So they asked me, so everything's predestined. Yes. To pet per reality. So, your destiny can change all the time depending on your vibration each vibrational reality has its destiny or it is its destination okay i hope that makes sense so yeah your outcome can always change it can always change the whole reality can always change but whatever reality you're vibrating in the stuff that happens in that reality is exactly what's meant to happen there are no mistakes. There are no coincidences. There are no accidents. There are none of those things. None of those things actually exist. That's what we've been taught, how to react to this idea. But yes, everything is predestined per radio. So think of it as radios. I love to see it as radio stations when I first started awakening into this, saying all these different, you know, so if you're tuned to 98.5 and 98.5, everything that happens in that vibrational reality is predetermined. You're going to face certain challenges, and all these things. You can decide any time within that uh, reality to change your vibration. Changing your vibration means changing your thoughts and how you're interacting with the energetic field in which you are made. <laughs> and every time you make a decision, you're changing that frequency. And that moves you into a different reality. And for every reality is a destination, is a predetermined reality. That's what happens in there. There's limitations and all kinds of things that we agree to in certain realities that don't exist in all realities. So uh, that really kind of blew this person's mind because I guess they didn't really consider the multiverse. We forget about that part. We're always uh, worried about spirit and moving into spirit, not understanding you're already a spirit and you're moving through already time space or the idea of time space or the illusion of time space because it's all just space. There is no time. But uh, that kind of opens up the mind. You have to remember there's a multiverse. You are the multiverse. You can experience every possibility. Any possibility is open to you. What are you willing to do to change your vibration to get there? That's manifestation. What is manifestation? Vibration. If you can match your vibration to something, you'll attract it to you. A lot of people want to try to manifest abundance or money. But if you're coming from a state of lack, I don't have enough, so I need to manifest more, that's going to bring more lack because your actual vibration is lack. It's coming from fear. If you see everything as, I have everything I need already, and it's okay if more comes. I am wealthy. Even if you have no money, if you have cents to your name or less than cents to your name, you can still see it as wealth. And if you take, take that into your mind and saying, telling, re rewiring yourself to understand that I am abundance. I am wealthy and abundance, money, wealth flows to me easily. Try that for a while. Try retraining your mind. I guarantee you things change. And abundance doesn't necessarily have to be money. Abundance can be many things. Having time for yourself. That can be, that's also abundance. Abundance isn't just money. It can be many, many ways. And the thing is, is you don't want to have any preconceived attachments that it has to be some certain way because it's never going to go the way that the ego wants it to. That the You can't control the future. It's impossible because there is no future. All you can control is the now. And the now is what dictates 
what vibrational reality you come into. So you can choose, change your vibration, whatever it is you want to bring into your life. If you're trying to manifest a partner, don't come from a mindset of lack, knowing that my perfect partner is arriving. My perfect partner is on its way. My perfect partner is here. Mm -hmm. Do you see? It starts changing how you interact with the field around you. This is also like the teachings. Uh, if you'd like to go deep into some of the meditations, uh, I always recommend Joe Dispenza for a lot of people. He's not quite into the shamanic energetics as I am, but he's basically going to tell you the same things. He's going to help you understand that you are the living field of energy and how you interact with it is going to directly dictate uh, what vibrational reality you observe because you are the observer. Wow, that was beautiful. Uh, I can feel my hands tingling now, I bet. Wow, we got a lot of stuff going on. YouTube, thanks, Tom. Yes. Wow, I was I was flipping stone there. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Good. Uh, I laughed at myself a few times, and I don't know what I did to the Zoom when I was off in my realm. I sat down, phone next to me. Stuff happens. Uh, I hate coming on. I haven't been about much lately. Uh, the energy has been messing with me, and I've been in pain, so not able to do breath work. Hoping to return once I feel better. Uh, tell me about what's going on, Tash. You're having uh, you're having ascension symptoms, is what that is. You're gonna have to learn how to breathe. You're gonna even if it breathes, it's breathing in some other way. You have to move that. Otherwise, you're gonna remain stagnant. Uh, what's happening is is uh, your symptoms. The symptoms are messengers. They're trying to tell you where to heal, and that's the first place they're showing me. Your guides are showing me right away. She's steering away. It's there. You're steering yourself away from your practices, which is okay. If you want to do that, I don't recommend that. That will typically bring suffering. Wow, brother, you're an angel of light. No doubt. Thank you. Anaiki Kuyaiki. Thank you. Ooh, I could feel that all over. Mm, thank you so much. You as well. It's a little hard to get because the audio comes before the visual. The audio comes before the visual. Am I still off? Am I still not synced? I don't know that. I know that that was happening before. Am I still, are my, my, are my words, am I still like a, uh, what's the words, like a kung fu uh, movie? Am I still not synced up? Because we'll have to figure out what's causing that. I got to head into work. Y'all enjoy the beautiful day. Peace and love. Thank you, Mark. One million Buddhas. We'll see you later. Alona Saunders, powerful. Wow. Yes, we are. It's wrapped around me. How cool is that? Good morning. Vibration and free will. Uh, so your free will is vibration. Okay. That's people want to know what is free will. Your vibration, your choice of how you choose. You have a choice all the time how you wish to vibrate, no matter what you say to yourself. Someone could come over, step on your toes, and you're left with a decision. You're going to vibrate high, you're going to vibrate low, or you're going to allow someone else's low vibration to vibrate with the low inside of you and bring that forward because we all have that. That's why we're reactive. All of us here are traumatized and reacting through our trauma. Some of us are peeling away these layers of trauma and coming into higher levels of vibration and awareness. But yes, free will, your actual people don't understand that until you get into a certain level of vibration. Your free will is your vibration. Nothing can stop you from vibrating the way you want to. It doesn't matter what happens. You could be in the middle of the greatest uh, destructive calamity uh, known to the planet, and you could still choose to vibrate high if you wanted to. You could. People think, people have convinced themselves, no, you don't have a choice, man. Sometimes it's, you have to react. Nope, they disagree. And so will Buddha and Jesus and uh, many others. <laughs> Doesn't mean I don't react. I sure do. Uh, Anne says, me too on the hands. I was able to heal my earaches from swimming and sinus. Except it's back again this morning. It woke me up before the alarm. <coughs> yeah, I'm sure. Um, you can eliminate symptoms for a certain period of time, but the symptoms are messengers. Until you heal the underlying issues, the symptoms recur over and over. Not synced. Oh, man. So it's still like that right now, huh? That's terrible. I wonder why that is. That didn't used to be that way. 
that's frustrating. I might have to get Mary on. Maybe we have to do some sort of change. I don't know. I don't have the ability to change that on the computer person personally. There's a second or so delay. Crap. You're still off. I turned down YouTube and listen on Facebook. That's terrible. Tash says, pain by my kidney, left side, numb fingers, flashing lights, and one eye headaches. Yeah, you got a whole bunch of stuff going on. Uh, uh, it's asking. So what you're being asked to do is uh, you're going to have to slow yourself down. You have to tune up that nervous system. That's how it works for all of us. The symptoms are much more difficult when we don't have the nervous system to support it. So Tash, I'm assuming that you're not, well, I'm not assuming they're telling on you. You don't have a daily breathwork pra practice. That's the first thing. Uh, there's really nothing more powerful you can do to improve your, um, your uh, nervous system flow. Um, so that's a one thing. It's good to watch on here or whatever, and you know, but this isn't every day. And uh, you know, this isn't actually like a breathwork practice. I'm just doing some samples, just doing some sample breathing. A real breathwork is when you sit down. It's just you. You're still. You're quiet. You're connecting to your inner body as you're breathing. This is more just like a show, a guidance, a way for us to connect energetically. But that's a one. That's the first thing. Until you connect to that nervous system, you're going to have increase because if you notice, your symptoms came on slow. They came on one by one by one, and that's what they're doing. Their guidance. You know, there'll be more if you don't begin to make the change right away. I will admit, I went off on family member last night. I was calm between light club and other thing, feeling great. And she came in and told me I was horrible for doing certain things. And I went off on her. Well, you reacted. Your ego reacted. You're, you're traumatized. I mean, that's going to happen. So you have to be gentle. You have to be forgiving to yourself. You have to be forgiving uh, to everyone else around you. That's what it is. So if someone comes in and they're... A, coming at you in some sort of way, what happens is, is, and the ego itself says, I'm being attacked. You know how many times I hear people say that? I feel attacked. You do. By the word someone said, you feel like someone's coming at you with a knife. Do you see how that's impossible? We live in this world where people like, don't condescend me. I can't. You have to accept it. Do you see? People get in these weird mindsets. I'm being talked down to. Are you or are you feeling down? Do you see? You're intimidating. Am I intimidating or are you intimidated? Do you see? It's it's We're not paying attention to how we're thinking and feeling. So if anything, and you just look at that as something to learn about yourself. I went off. Right. You didn't go off. Who you really are can never go off. The ego went off. The codependent entity, which is our persona created through our past experiences and traumas. It's constantly, it's a defense network. We're constantly working and connecting. We're pretty much, we've been trained to pretty much operate in this reality through our defense mode network. We have to go beyond our defense mode network. And when we can do that, that would become understanding. So when someone comes in and says that, you know, you're horrible, because that's why you reacted, you blew up because you felt horrible. You accepted. Do you see? No one can like insult you or anything. It doesn't matter what someone says. They can, someone can say something, but people react. I have to defend myself. But you're not in any harm. Oh, but, but, but. And then there's all these buts, buts, buts happen in the mind. But, 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 no but. <laughs> you're choosing. We've been, we've been duped. We're constantly being, uh, you know, trained into overacting, acting through. Our emotional distress, far out, far out. Okay, thank you. My pleasure, Tash. And also, if you would like to get into a private session, I always recommend that. I think I've recommended this to you before. Get yourself into a private session. We can go deeper into your healing. We can go deep into the, because all this is stemming from is unresolved emotional trauma. 
You're having a bunch of low vibrational stuff happening. And it takes some work to go into there, to revert, to go into uh, these timelines and open up the energetics within them. So basically, I can sense that you need probably a soul retrieval. A soul retrieval will help us bring forward the fragments of your energy field or in some senses, one may call this soul fractures. I don't exactly see it that way because uh, for my understanding, I see the soul is infallible. It cannot be broken, hurt, harmed. It's already healed. Um, uh, the only thing that can be is the energetics surrounding the being. Uh, and that's where we have to make changes. So if you're open to make change, we're here to help you. If not, I can give you advice for you to try. The thing is, is uh, nothing's uh, independent. Everything's interdependent. We need to work together to really make big change. For La Chapelle's here. Good morning. Get a private session. It will knock your socks off. <laughs> Nobody needs socks anyways. We're supposed to be grounding. Barefoot's the way to go. Amanda says, I've been laying here keeping my flower open and asking, allowing energy to enter. I felt like I became nothing. Yeah, that's beautiful. I melded into the space around me. Does that make sense? It makes absolute sense. Absolute sense. Because it's what's happening. You're opening up and now you're sensing your truth. Because what you're feeling is your truth. That's who you really are. You're not this limited meat bag of emotions. That's not what you really are. That's just one aspect of your being. There's the rest. All of it's you. I'm you. The ceiling, the floor, the sky, the empty space, every star, every quasar, every everything, everything. You are all things and you are nothing. You're just the space that holds the container that holds all of this energy too. Yeah, I am nobody. I love I love that idea. I love saying that. Uh, I am nobody because people are like, you're treating me like a nobody, but you are nobody. You're nobody. You're not a body. That's not who you are. <laughs> it's so weird how we've been so mind effed. But we can undo that. We can totally undo that. I've had a shift to a consciousness shift to the inside. I'm excited. Something's happening. Yes, something's happening for all of us. All of our vibrations are rising and we're growing and growing and expanding. Our consciousness is expanding. Yeah, I can feel it. I'm directly connected. We're all directly connected because we are all source pieces of these living energies. And uh, I'm just so grateful that I get to be a vessel along with these other vessels to uh, usher in uh, a new layer of being. New capabilities and energetics, right? None of this is available if not there's not people like us that do the work and bring this energy into the reality. Because when we do, that creates potentials to make decisions, to change that channel like I was talking about earlier, making that quantum shift, shifting into a new quantum dimension, which is your free will. That's what free will is. You have free will. You do to decide how you wish to vibrate. So if someone comes up and causes you to react and you do react, it's okay. You're not bad for reacting. doesn't matter what anyone says. doesn't matter what your ego says, what it says. You're bad. See, you've reacted. You're bad. You're not bad. You're learning. And if you choose to make it that way, then you'll start to be that way. But if we try to defend, because what usually the ego does, it defends. It'll be like, well, she deserved it. She pushed my buttons, so I gave it to her. Like there's even memes out there. And spiritual sites where there's people saying like, um, what's one of them I see? It always gives me a giggle. It's basically uh, people push you until the bad side comes out. When the bad side comes out, they call you crazy. Well, right. Who's pushing you? Who, who's What's happening? If there's no physical harm or contact, there's no reason to react. Why do you react? That's the question. That's how you start to unfold your shadow is you start asking yourself. So, and that's a per, it's perfect. What that is, is it's showing your perfect medicine. You see what's happened. You're saying, yeah, I reacted. And what you're saying is, yeah, I didn't need to react. Good. So that right there, you're right on the right track. You're starting to take apart your shadow. Now you start asking yourself, why did I react? Why did I feel the need that I had to react? What was I defending? See, and then you'll start going deeper. Then you'll start seeing as you go in. It always is going to take you into the inner child or the inner layers of your uh, energetic system. People see it different. I can call I call it inner child, but what I'm really saying is is the inner layer of the onion 
which is your energy field. It always takes you in there. There's a need that's not being met. Fear. It's, it's, it's irrational fear because there's nothing to be afraid of. And we can go in there. We can rectify that, bring comfort and love into that inner child, into that inner layer. And then it starts to change outward is kind of what happens. So the triggers are triggers. So your physical pain, when you react to other people, any trigger, your trigger is always showing you where you're not free, where you can heal. You just have to agree that you need to heal there is where that needs to open. But most of the time, what we're doing is we're defending. We're defending our behavior. And then the ego will even goes full so far as to, you know, post on social media trying to get other people to agree with you. And if someone doesn't agree, basically a lot of people put it out as a question, am I wrong? And then if you try to point out to someone that, oh, there's better ways to do it, they get mad at you because the, the ego wants you to agree. The ego is looking for, you know, do you agree with me? It, need, it needs, it's codependent. It needs to be agreed with. That's all it's asking for. When really all you got to do is bring love into it. Thank you, Fawn. See you tomorrow for a private session. Send me to the moon. <laughs> I will. We're going to the moon, Fawn. I'm looking forward to it. All right, let's uh, finish up the session here this morning. It's been a beautiful morning. Uh, lots of, uh, I can feel all the vibrational energy coming through me. Oh, and then we're going to do, uh, who was it that needed some healing? Somebody asked. Who was it? Who was it? I'm trying to see who it was. Uh -huh. Oh, Alona. Alona, if you're still here and you're open and ready to receive healing, I just need you to say yes. Type yes. Everyone else, let's come together. Ah, let's do some pineapple breathing. That's uh, three pieces of breath. The first one, smell the flower, cool the soup. The second part is uh, two sniffs in the side, third part in and out through the mouth. And we're going to get high on our own supply. That's going to open it up. Okay. Beautiful. All right, let's begin. Uh, in through the nose, out through the mouth. Smell the flower. Cool the soup. Flower. Soup. Flower. Soup. Flower. Soup. Continue breathing, seeing a beautiful, beautiful flower. And as you're inhaling, smelling that beautiful flower, see if you can smell that flower. And while you do that, I'm going to smudge. I'm going to clear any heavy energy in this space and in your space. Continue breathing that way. Smell the flower, cool the soup. Smell the flower, cool the soup. I have my abalone shell. And we're just going to roast our Pablo Santo a little bit. I also have some pine tar in here. Continue breathing. Ah, there we go. Maybe as you're breathing, you might smell the Palo Santo. That's normal. I have a lot of clients that I work with when I smudge before uh, private sessions. They'll tell me they smell it. Let's move now into two sniffs and a sigh. Ah, ah, let a smile come on your face. Ah, 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 ah. Ah, continue breathing. We're going to use this space now as an energy clearing. Continue breathing using your in-breaths as light. And your exhales, releasing any heavy energy or smoke. Ah, 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 ah. Ah, anywhere in your body you feel heavy, stuck, or stagnant, breathe into it. Breathe. Take your air. Take light into it. This is a beautiful way for you to connect to your energy field and create balance. Ah, breathe in anywhere it feels like it needs healing. Or if it's just your whole body, you want to illuminate your whole body, bring air to your whole body. Ah, I'm doing my whole body right now. Ah, 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 and with the light, out with the smoke. Switching in and out through the mouth. Expand that belly.
Big breath in and hold. Hold, squeeze, squeezing downward towards the floor, sending all heavy energies towards the floor into the earth. And as you exhale, allowing them to move into the earth, allowing Mother Earth to drink them away. Three, two, one, release. Whoosh, sending into the earth, sending any heavy energy, any fear, any worry, any guilt or shame. Mm, non-forgiveness or resentment, allow this to move through your body, becoming aware of that downward flow. You're taking in a downward flow of light through the top of your head, your shoulders, your forehead. It's moving down through your body, coursing through, taking any heaviness with it and fe feeding it to the earth. Mm. I just felt a couple, felt like gastric disturbances move downward. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Take a deep breath in. Release. Deep breath in. Release. Deep breath in. Release. Again. One more. Deep breath in and hold. Hold, squeeze into your tummy, your navel, and release. <sighs> Very good. Let us all come together energetically. You can close your eyes. Keep your tongue in contact with the roof of your mouth. Allow yourself to use your energy body, your subtle body, your spirit body. Allow us to all congregate and commune with our spirit bodies. Ah, coming out into a large, beautiful meadow. It's a meadow with tall grass, wildflowers, butterflies, bees, sunshine, blue sky. Mm, feeling that summer solstice feeling. Ah, that sun just passing its highest point now, shining down, bringing in its perfect energy and medicine to us. Ah, let us all congregate, come together. We're going to form a circle. Let us put together. Open your palms, open your hands. Imagine, use your mind's eye. Let us all come together. Bring our hands together. Feeling the energetics of the hands of each other in each other's hands. I feel you all. Let us begin to move energy. Energy coming from your left hand, coming up your shoulder, coming up, passing through your shoulder and your heart, then moving up towards your head, moving up towards your head, looping out through the top of your head, reaching into your viracocha, coming back down into your head in an arc through the right shoulder and then out the right hand into the person next to you. We're going to continue this flow of energy coming in, moving. It's moving in a flow, moving in a flow. Just use your intent to make it happen. Don't try to follow or chase it. Trying to be really conscious of where it is now. Just open up saying the flow is moving from my left hand through my body, my head, and out my right hand. And then just stand back. Just be in the space. Just be in the acceptance of your experience. We're all connected now energetically. Allow your heart center to open like a flower. Connecting. Let us all now take in the energy of the sun, feeling your chest opening like a flower, beginning to drink the golden energy of the sun as we're in this meadow and this field. Drink in that energy through your heart and let that add to the flow moving through us. We're bringing in a deep cosmic flow, column of light and energy in the middle of our circle. Mm, beautiful golden and white rays shimmering like diamonds. Our collective energy is here. Alona, now that you're here and ready to receive healing, I'm sensing you have a heart chakra blockage. That's the first place we're going to go. Alona, I want you to step forward and come into the middle of the circle. 
You're within the collective energy circle of your soul family. And we're here to bring you loving, loving healing. Open your arms, Alona, chest high. Open your arms. If you're sitting, just open your arms, lay back. Oh, I could feel that. Very good. Let yourself open. As we're all holding our hands, let us all breathe Alona as well. We're going to use some fire breathing to amp up the speed here. Go at a speed that's comfortably challenging for you. You don't have to go as fast as I'm going. <laughs> holding hands. Pumping energy in through the heart. Moving in our circle. We're all clearing our heart chakras now. Alona, bring all of your awareness to your chest. Saying in your mind, I'm open and ready to receive. Deep breath in. Hold. Everyone bringing your attention to your heart center and then out to the center into Alona's heart center. Let us send all of our loving energy into Alona's heart center, disintegrating any heaviness, moving it away. Let us all exhale. Release. Very good. Let us all now relax, still sitting in our circle. The flow of energy just moving on its own. Mm -hmm. Alona, this is arising. What they're showing me is, is you're holding on to guilt. You have some sort of guilt living inside of you. Something, some things you're holding on to. Things you feel that you should feel guilty or ashamed of. It's time to let go. If you're open and ready to let go, saying out loud, I'm open and ready to release. I'm open and ready to let go. Beautiful. I'm ready to release. Saying out loud, I'm ready to release. I'm ready to release. Allow that energy, that emotion to come forward, Alona. Don't hold back. Yes, it's rising in your chest. Beautiful. And as it rises in your chest, I'm going to help you remove this heavy energy where we'll transmute it back into light. Alona, I want you to take in a nice deep breath. Hold. I'm going to reach into your energy field now. I'm reaching in. I want you to squeeze now into your chest where that heaviness lives. I want you to count backwards now in your mind from three. When you get to one, when we get to one, let us exhale and I will remove, allowing me to have three, two, one. Exhale. Whoosh. Beautiful. This energy is asking to come back to you, but we're going to refine it first. I'm going to hold it into my heart and let us all breathe, having the awareness that we're going to refine this heart energy of Alona, helping it strip itself of any heaviness, feeding the heaviness to the earth. Let us breathe in and out through our mouth. <sighs> Big breath in. Let us all now charge this energy with our heart source. Charging, squeeze your energy, your breath into this energy. Rectification. Beautiful. We've now rectified your energy. All of this is you. This just needed rectification and love. While we're standing here, you can probably feel that 
near emptiness now in the center of your body where we've removed this heavy energy. Allow yourself now to begin to fill that with forgiveness. I forgive you. Saying to yourself, I forgive you. I love you. You're perfect. You are perfect. You're a living, walking, talking, breathing miracle. I am a miracle. Yes, you deserve to be loved. We love you. I love you. You're loved. Beautiful. Alona taking a deep breath in. All of your air out. Empty, empty all the way. And then going to put this energy back into your chest. And as you inhale, you're going to drink it in. Big inhale. Inhaling, hold, squeeze now, squeeze into your chest. And then let your whole body begin to squeeze all the way out to your fingertips, toes, and top of your head. And release. Beautiful. That's energy rectification. We'll remove something that's heavy, turn it back into light, and put it back. Now you're complete again. You're going to notice now. Now it feels like uh, I can feel this kind of like butterfly feeling a little bit lower in the chest, maybe upper stomach. And now the chest feeling a lot more free, a lot more open. Let's take in a deep breath, all of us still in our circle. Alone is still in the middle of the circle. And as we exhale, sending a wave of Sami of energy to Alona again. Waves of Sami. Sending him towards the middle. Alona just accepting these waves of energy. <sighs> Taking the collective medicine again. <sighs> Two more. <sighs> Last one. <sighs> very good, very good. Let us all just be here for a moment in this circle of loving energy. While we're here, let us use our minds and our souls to create heaven on earth. Connect to your frequency. What do you want to happen? What to you would be the most beautiful outcome, not only for your personal self, but for your family, for all humans, for the earth, for the cosmos. Bring that vibration into you, into us. We are the collective consciousness. <sighs> and then bring gratitude. I am so grateful. I'm grateful for this life. I'm grateful for this vessel in which to experience this reality. I'm grateful for all my victories and triumphs. I'm grateful for all my challenges and perceived losses. Thank you. Thank you for this beautiful, Beautiful, beautiful opportunity for this beautiful human experience. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And Nike Kuyaiki, Arpichai Big breath in. Hold, let us squeeze our hands. Make tight fists, tight fists. Squeeze, 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 squeeze your entire body and your fists. I'm going to count backwards from three. When I get to one, we're going to exhale, releasing our circle. Three, two, one, release. Whoosh. Open your hands, shake out your hands, and then we're going to clap our hands a few times. Taking in a deep breath, clap your hand. And as you exhale, blowing through your hands, freeing your hands. Free. Mm, that was beautiful. I took in a bunch of healing for myself as well. I hope everyone else did as well. Whenever we're doing exercise like that, you can always draw healing energy into yourself, into your body. We're part of a healing circle, the consciousness. <clears throat> Beautiful. I want to thank everyone for that. Thank you so much. Jeanette says, sorry I'm late. We'll do this replay evening. My oldest daughter just left. Going to buy a new computer now and getting some help with my phone this afternoon. Was really sad I couldn't uh, dissipate. Mm, I was looking forward to that with all of you, my healing friends. Oh, that's okay. I think it's participate. Uh, 
at 1 a.m. Oh, that was last night. Yeah, Jeanette, that's okay. We'll get you in the next one. You're already in the next one, okay? Uh, we'll just have to figure out. I was talking earlier, actually, when you watched the replay at the beginning of the show. I was talking about Jeanette, uh, that you showed up, but you couldn't get the audio. But that's okay. If you're getting everything straightened out, what we can do is we can do like a practice Zoom call before then to make sure that the audio works for you and everything, okay? So once you get your new computer and everything, just reach out. And what we'll try to do is I'll just set up... We'll just, you know, since you didn't make it, what I'll do is I'll do like a 15 minute Zoom with you, just you and me. And it'll be like a like a minor like breath kind of session. You just do a little bit of shamanic work with me just to get you like sped up. I'll be able to give you all of the downloads that we took last night. We'll get you back up, which you did anyway, because you're part of this living circle. But I'll help you to um, what's the word? Uh, fix a fix absorb, absorb the necessary energies that came through. So as soon as you're set up, Jeanette, reach out and we'll figure out a time we can just get on a quick Zoom, make sure your Zoom works. So, wow, that's what I'm saying. So much gratitude. Yeah, I'm trying not to cry actually right now. So uh, not that crying, there's nothing wrong with crying. I just typically try not to do it when I'm in the middle of speaking. <laughs> Crying is actually good for you. I felt in my heart chakra. Yeah, that's the whole idea. We're clearing our hearts. If you clear your heart, you'll be able to connect to the sun. The sun connects directly to your heart. That's how it is. It's the golden energy of your being. Uh, so whenever you go outside and you see that sun, love it. Just close your eyes for a moment. Picture, I always like to picture a flower opening or an eyeball. It's like an eye. Opening. That's actually how it's described in uh, the Pakakuna tradition is, you know, like you're uh, like in uh, e Eastern traditions, you have a chakra system and the chakras are spinning wheels uh, of energy. They're, they align with your uh nerve centers. Well, uh, in the Pakakuna tradition, it's basically the same idea, except for this ancient tradition is eyes. It sees eyes. So you have eyes in these places. So uh, you can open that. I, I, I typically like to envision a flower because it's so beautiful to see a flower and its petals open. And then you're taking it. I see all these petals almost like a, um, what's the word I'm looking for? A satellite dish. It opens a satellite dish. You just open up. So if you go outside today and you look at the sun, just take a moment to open your heart. Take in a slow, deep breath. Close your eyes. And just drink. <sighs> Even though you're inside, I'm inside right now and I can feel the sun. It's talking to us all the time. It's beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Alona, if you're still with us, check in. Let us know how you're feeling. Let us know. Uh, thank you. Yes, you're awesome. You're awesome, honey. I'm so glad you're here. That's how I work. It's so beautiful. Mm-hmm. Uh, I see a lotus flower opening. Beautiful, Brianna. That's a beautiful spiritual uh, vision. I connected. Whew, I got the goosebumps. Brianna, you're getting stronger. I like that. That's good. Whew. Hold back in my head. You just sent a beautiful signal to me. Thank you. Thank you to your soul and energy, Brianna, for being here. Whew. Wow, it's really strong light right now. Drinking blue light. Yeah, I just took in a big... Uh, Brianna, uh, just through her lotus flower and what her vision, what she sent to me, I just took in a big uh, drink of blue light. That blue light's the Christed consciousness. That's the Christed over self or uh, Christ consciousness. However one wants to look at it, um, fifth dimension type, you know, everybody wants to hear it different. I mean, there's no wrong answer. Uh, we were talking even last night on um, our on Light Club, we were talking about uh, how I consider it's called singing the song, how uh, how a frequency is presented to you. It's almost like a song, the way it shows up, and it'll connect to you in a certain way, kind of like songs do. Alona's got hearts. I'm assuming that means you're feeling good, Alona. Let us know how you're feeling. You can check in with words if you'd like. That was powerful. Man, I feel really, really good right now. Really, really good. Let's integrate that. Let's do some circular breathing. Let's do some Wim Hof style breathing. Wim Hof. Wim Hof. I love that guy, by the way. 
uh, I connect with him in spirit quite often. He's been very uh, instrumental in, in my growth, very instrumental. Him and many other spiritual teachers, I connect very deeply also with uh, many, many spiritual teachers. Uh, we, we are able to commune with these uh, entities and beings because beyond their physical being, there's also an energetic imprint that we're able to connect into. Alona says, was in tears. That's good. Let those tears out. Tears are cleansing. That's that heaviness leaving you. Allow it to leave. Allow it to go. You don't need it to be. You can be very loving. Sometimes when we're crying, it's like anger. We're crying like because we don't want to cry. I can't believe I'm crying. No, man. Want that. Oh, it feels so good to cry. Let it go. Let it leave. Ah. <sighs> I separate. I allow you to move. I give you permission. You're giving the heavy energy in you permission to move. Because the heavy energy is you as well, and it just needs to be reorganized, put into a different way. And the crying sometimes can totally reorganize that heavy energy. Uh, I couldn't cry for nearly 20 years. And finally, when I could, it was ah so amazing. And now I make it a habit. Um, I, I sometimes just... You know, I don't write it down when it happens, but it's often, it's often. And I cry mostly out of pure joy, pure ecstatic joy, ah, just because we're here, just because we get to be here. And I love it. I hope you're feeling good, Alona. And as your day goes on, that's a lot of energy and you're going to be feeling really well as the day goes on. Have to go watch replay before I go to bed. See you later, Jeanette. Again, check in with us when you get your electronics in order so we can just do a quick little sit down to make sure you're on there. All right, so we're going to do some Wim Hof breathing. Uh, this is, a, you're not going to have to count, I'll count, and I don't really count. I go by feel. Uh, this is very simple. Uh, you're breathing in. It's a circular breath. So you're breathing in, belly, chest, head, and then right back out, and right back in. So you're not exhaling all the way. You're exhaling most of the way and then reversing, inhaling right back in. So it's a full inhale. As soon as you reach the top, that, that uh, top of the inhale, you're exhaling already. And as you're exhaling, you're already inhaling. So there's no pause. The whole idea is to have no pause. This is alkaline breathing. We're going to do about 30 breaths, and then we're going to do an exhale hold uh, for uh, probably, we're going to see if we can do a minute. We're going to all see. Let's see how strong your breath hold capability is. Let's see if you can hold for a minute. One full minute, no breath uh, after we oxygenate. If not, you just hold as long as you can. And then you take a big breath in and then you hold that for about 15 seconds. Okay. Three, two, one, begin. Five more. Give it all you got. Three. Two. Last breath fully in. Release to a neutral lung. Stop. Hold. Time starts. One minute hold.
you can't hold that long, just breathe when you need to. But if you can, continue to hold. 10 seconds left. Three, two, one, inhale. Hold. Squeeze lightly into your head. And release. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Book a session with us at thepositivepineapple.org. We would love to see you for a personal session. Check out our website. Go on there. You can also uh, register for the next light club. The next light club is July 7th at 7 p.m. So that's 7, 7 at 7 p.m. Okay, 7 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, and there's also a Saturday, day, July 23rd at 11 a.m. That's going to be an 11 a.m. Saturday, 11 a.m. That's going to be awesome. Uh, so you, the donation can be made through the Ticket Tailor link in the event descriptions. Use the Ticket Tailor. That's what it's there for. Some of us aren't following directions. We're still making donations directly to, um, and then with the note, we're not doing it that way anymore. So please, if you want to be part of it, you must register. You must go to the Ticket Tailor link. Okay, so it's in our website. It's also in the descriptions. It's okay if you forget. That's okay. We're still going to help you, but eventually there will be a cutoff, and if you don't do it right, you just won't get the code. The, the code becomes automatically through Ticket Tailor gives you the code. Okay, so you want to go on there and you want to get yourself in there. We have a sound bath event coming up July 17th at, um, uh, why can't I think of it right now? Uh, at the yo at with Rita at uh, shoot, why can't I think of what the, <laughs> I'm barely in this right planet, I guess, right now? We have our sound bath event, uh, July 17th. You can uh, find that on our website or uh, Turning Point that's what it is Turning Point Yoga and Wellness that's here in Westlake, Old Brooklyn Nutrition, Sunday, July 24th, uh, 3 p.m. Uh, the doors open, 4 p.m. We start to breath work. So you can come in at 3 p.m. Uh, you can get yourself a drink. Uh, it's a nutrition place. It's Herbalife Supplements. Uh, they make all kinds of different kinds of teas and shakes. Come on in and get yourself some delicious nutrition, bringing the nutrition into your body before we go into our spiritual practice. I recommend that. I love doing that. It actually, You actually feel it. You can feel the nutrition in your body. You can feel the vibration in your body. So it's really, really nice. So those are the events we have going on. Help support our mission of healing. If you like what we're doing and would like to help us continue to expand and help other people and bring healing more uh, of this to you, more of this to others, send us a little bit of money. Money is energy. We need some energy exchange. If you can potentially send us an energy exchange, fantastic. If you do not have a couple dollars to give, you can reciprocate. Because reciprocation, divine reciprocity is very important uh, to the energetic uh, cycle. Uh, you can also share, share, share. I recommend everyone share. There's people looking for us. Let's expand our community. Let's see if we can get these morning breaths full. What, what happens when we can get 100 people sitting here watching with us? We had a pretty nice crowd today. I think we had close to 20. Uh, that's nice. When we have 20 people at once sitting here breathing, connecting together, that's very, very powerful work. So let's spread that out. Tell your friends. Tell your friends about the change. Tell your friends about what... Uh, uh, Anthony the shaman, uh, Mary and uh, Mary the fairy. I love her. And uh, uh, the positive pineapple, what we're doing, we're out here, we're changing this place. We're raising the vibration. We're bringing healing to all. Help us, help support our mission of healing. Thank you for your generous donations. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Those who donate, big thank you to you. You're helping us keep the lights on. Expansion, we want to continue to expand, offering free healings to people that need them. We're here to help everyone. We help everyone regardless of finance. If you need financial assistance, we're moving more into that. There's going to be like actual financial assistance where we'll have you send like a tax return information or something 
to us. So that way we can determine a sliding scale on what it is that you could potentially uh, pay. We can put you on a payment plan. We're going to have some other things going on too. I'm going to have to, I'm going to start offering uh, some subscription based uh, healing sessions where we can get small groups in there on a subscription base. I think that would be really cool. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let's jump back into the comments. Where was I? Me either, brother. I all cry off in tears of joy. I know you do. I know you do. I know you do. I know you do. Uh, let's just come. Oh, your computer, I think you're saying. Yes, do that. I will. Uh, I'm feeling more free now, less heaviness. I'm smiling, feeling more love in my heart. Good. That's a good place to start. You, all the blockage is gone now, Alona. So there's nothing else there. Uh, the only thing that will happen is, is there is what I'm sensing uh, is a anchor point that is an anchor point for heavy energy. And this has to do with your non-forgiveness of self. Uh, this may require you. I'm always going to try to tell you that guide you into a personal session. In the personal session, we can go into the imprints. We can go into the underlying emotional trauma bring it forward and rectify. We can make that change. Uh, but if you stick to your breath work and everything going like that, you can really start to uh, create more change. You can keep that from reconnecting the heavy energy connection. Basically what happened, Alona, is, is I cut a cord for you. Uh, I don't really, that's kind of like more of uh, a lower vibrational mindset to see cords. I don't see cords. I see everything as energy. <laughs> But to make it more understandable for the conceptual mind, basically a cord has been cut, but uh, which will bring relief, deep relief. But the thing is, cords have anchor points, and that's usually the part where most spiritual teachers uh, neglect to help people release. Uh, that I can't do here through the comments. This will be have to be something we would do in person, virtual. Uh, and what we do is release the anchor point. When you remove the anchor point, now there's nothing for that cord to reattach to. Or, or the intrusive energy to live off of. It's like a, a receptacle in the wall for a plug. So if we remove the receptacle, it can't plug in anymore. Last night, I forgot to breathe for a while, and it was okay for a few minutes. <laughs> yeah, that happens. That's totally okay. You didn't forget. You just didn't need to. So what it was is your, your energetic system was connecting. And that's beautiful. Breath during healing was very powerful beyond anything I have ever experienced. How cool is that? It's very beautiful, especially when you're inside of a circle of collective energy. Uh, energy doesn't know time or distance. So here with the soul family that we work with, a lot of these people I work with every day, uh, quite often. And uh, we all have uh, energy sensitivities and medicine gifts. And when we come together, we can help other people absorb these things. Love the subscription idea. Me too, Tom. I just got to figure out how to make that work. That's all I need. I have all these possibilities. I just need guidance, I guess, because, you know, I can, I'm only capable of so much bandwidth uh, myself. But that's why I have to continue to grow our spirit family, our soul family. Because as that happens, everything kind of unfolds itself. Can set a ward. Hello, ma'am. How are you today? I have to go now. Start packing for camping trip. Cool. Go enjoy nature, Brianna. Thank you for being here. Angie. Hello. Hi, Angie. Or Ange. I'm not sure how you pronounce that. It looks like NJ. Angie. Thank you for today's session, soul family. Thank you. Thank you. Schizo Crypto, a.k.a. Carson. Carson has a couple names. But that's okay. We love you, man. The one. You're all the one. The one. The, just another piece of the one speaking back to you. Amanda Whitehorn. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ange. Okay. Cool. Hi, Ange. Well, we're at just about the end here of this session. I want to thank you all so much for being here. What a beautiful, beautiful morning. Catch me again Friday morning. Uh, Friday, I'm going to jump on and I'm going to, I'm going to do it again. I'm going to do a healing instead of like a more, this is kind of more of an interactive live. We're going to do a, a more of a focused healing live. So if you're in need of healing or know someone that's in need of physical pain, chronic pain, healing, 
emotional problems, anything like that. Uh, I'll be giving give you away free mini healings right here through the comments Friday. So come on Friday and we'll be here and I'll be doing some uh, shamanic healings for everyone. Uh, we did do one today, which is cool. We did it in uh, the style of um, a collective, a collective consciousness kind of healing. If you didn't catch that, if you weren't here for that, watch the replay. You can become part of that energy field. Energy knows no time or distance. It's all happening now. So that's quite often when people watch these videos, watch the replays, they'll usually send me emails or texts telling me, wow, I really connect to energy. Or if it's a healing, they'll see, oh, wow, I was able to connect to that healing and I got healing from it. So uh, don't be afraid. Go back. Watch all of the old ones. If you got time, sit there, watch some of these old ones. Uh, I recommend also, if you're not already on our YouTube channel, get on our YouTube channel, like, subscribe, turn on your notifications, and you'll be notified of all of our free live streams. Lots of free live streams. You want to get on there. Uh, yep. Like, subscribe, turn on your notifications. That's important. We're, we're doing so well, by the way. We're at over 550. I think we're close to 560 viewers now, people. 560 subscribers. So that means that there's hundreds outside of that that watch because not everybody has a YouTube uh, account. Not everybody wants to subscribe to anything. I mean, I didn't until more recent times. Uh so I know for a fact that if we have 560 people, there's probably twice as many that are watching. So that's good. But the whole idea is to get as many viewers as possible. So that way we can begin to monetize. And then maybe we can make, uh, we can create some sort of abundance. We can make some uh, money through doing these videos. And then that opens the door for more capability. We can get out here and do more videos, do more things, right? Because that's what we're going to do. We have some uh, things coming up this summer. Uh, that we're going to do. Uh, we're planning actually a trip to, um, I think we're going to be going to Sarasota, I think, Florida. Siesta Key, that's a very powerful place to go. Mayaka State Park is in that area. Uh, I like to go there and uh, connect to the energetics there. It's a very powerful vortex, especially when I uh, connect to the Gulf. I'll end up on a uh, quartz Plus, it's quartz sand there. The quartz, anybody that understands uh, energy of stones or anything would know that quartz sand is highly vibrational. And when I get my bare feet in that quartz sand and into the ocean, connecting with my Misha and the sun, beautiful information comes into my being. I download information and medicine. I'm trading energy with the grid because it's all a grid of informational energy. And that's amazing. So be on the lookout. We got lots of new things coming, lots of fun. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, please. Friday, many blessings. Thank you. I will replay to help me with some healing. Absolutely, Ange. And Ange, if you are interested in receiving some healing, uh, hop onto our website. We also have, you watch the videos and everything, but if you find that you're ready for a private session, we have private sessions available. People love them. We would deal with people all over the globe. 44 countries now, 44. 44, 44 countries around the globe. Now we've got to work with souls all over the place. And that means we're connecting those ley lines of energy. Like I was just describing when I go to different places and do work, that's all like, so that's kind of how it works for me. That's how travel is for me. It's uh, spiritual work. Uh, I'm always guided. Mary's my guide and always guides me where I need to go. Um, <laughs> so it's really fun. It's really, really a good time to uh, connect these energy lines and uh, bring healing to all of us. I think that's it. I think I'm going to wrap it up here, friends. That's an hour 52. I can't believe two hours has flown by already. It's so much fun. I love you guys so much. I hope you have a beautiful day. Breathe and be love. Breathe, breathe, breathe. I love you guys so much. I'll see you Friday. Love, peace, and chicken grease.